at night, it lights up really nice. Jose Lugo says these tall metal towers quickly popped up after Brooklyn Battery Tunnel toll booths came down. We don't really know what's the, the purpose of this. It's a $100 million MTA project full of secrecy with 18 of these for the tunnels and bridges. So what are they exactly? Are you saying you can't call, comment to me? You know, That's the can't. MTA's man in charge of bridges and tunnels, Cedric Fulton, dodging our questions. Not even late, uh, later, can we talk to you about it or can I make a appointment? Some MTA board members, including New York City Transportation Commissioner Polly Trottenberg, say they know too little about the towers, even with about half the money spent and some of the towers up. A lot of the board members felt like they didn't have all the details they would have wanted, myself included. Residents who say they suspect there is much more going on with these towers than meets the eye wonder, will they ever know what's going on inside them? I'm going to guess it's probably not just a decoration. It's a bit mind-boggling that the MTA is approving $100 million for what appears to us to be uh, big decorative uh, pylons. John Caney is leader of the watchdog group Reinvent Albany. What we're asking for is transparency from the MTA. We demanded answers from MTA chairman Joe Loda. Some of your own board members say they don't know the specifics. The base of these new, um, uh, new pieces that are going up uh, include whatever uh, fiber optics are necessary for those homeland security items. In other words, anti-terror technology. Could it one day include facial recognition? We don't know. He won't say. I'm not at liberty to discuss that. So watch as more of these expensive towers rise with mystery tucked away inside them. In Lower Manhattan, Dave Carlin, CBS 2. mystery here and it's getting a lot of attention here behind me as you said officials with Homeland Security they're trying to figure out exactly what they're dealing with here off the beach now I'm told that the Coast Guard uh, they were notified Monday that there was some type of mysterious submarine like vessel here in the ocean which is actually just north of Boca Raton now divers responded to investigate the vessels uh, as you can see now has made its way on shore now Coast Guard officials tell me Homeland Security is now taking over this investigation they been out here all morning long. We talked to residents. They say they first noticed the vessel floating in the water last week, and they too are anxious to know exactly what's going on here today. Now, I can tell you there are several agencies taking part in this investigation. We're told they hope to ha have it removed by sometime later today. We're told Homeland Security, FBI, DEA, and U.S. Coast Guard all trying to investigate and determine exactly what that is. We, of course, will have more tonight online and at 5. Reporting live in Highland Beach, Angela Rosier, WPBF 25 News. In the southern tier community of Limestone have a mystery on their hands tonight. Why are these new video cameras installed on utility poles in their community? Even Limestone authorities say they're not really sure. 7 Eyewitness News reporter Ed Riley went looking for some answers today. So we really don't know who's responsible for them, and nobody seems to want to tell us. These cameras installed at the intersection of Route 219 and Bailey Drive in Limestone have become quite a conversation piece. There's a lot of curiosity, for sure. A few weeks ago, residents in this small rural community noticed crews putting them up. They didn't say much. No advertisement on the vehicles that would come. But even Limestone officials did not know what was going on. I mean, they should have come to the board yeah. probably first and told us an idea what they're doing. You know, I mean, it is our community. And At first, people thought they were being used for traffic control because many drivers speed through this 40 mile per hour zone and the intersection has a history of accidents. We thought at first it was state police, you know. But the New York State Department of Transportation says it has nothing to do with the cameras other than approving an installation permit for the Department of Homeland Security. Homeland Security saying very little, only issuing a brief statement which says we can't confirm or deny that the cameras belong to Homeland Security. Our cameras are everywhere, so it's just something you have to live with. For some, the cameras represent modern society where video surveillance is everywhere. Today's world is scary. But others wonder if the electronic eyes are tracking dangerous suspects as they take the 219 into and out of Pennsylvania. You know, with everything that's happened and 
you just never know where you're safe anymore. And there are those who say if the cameras are tools for law enforcement, great, because it will only benefit everyone. Do the job. They're going to catch the bad guys going through here, then more power to them. The state DOT does not know how long the cameras will be up or if they're permanent. But Limestone officials plan to keep looking for explanations, and there has been a benefit. Drivers are seeing the cameras and slowing down as they go through the intersection. At Riley 7, Eyewitness News. Right down here. You notice anything unusual about it? Well, the idea is you're not supposed to, but across the country and here in Southwest Florida, law enforcement are disguising cameras in everyday objects and in all kinds of places. The video is a little shaky, but this NBC2 viewer wanted proof. Proof that an electric box on a power pole outside his Lehigh Acres home wasn't that at all. He was disturbed to see this, a camera pointed right back at his home. Now tell me what that is up there. No? no. He says he called the Lee County Sheriff's Office to complain, and shortly thereafter, an electric crew with the initials PTC was on scene to take it down. But NBC2 was able to find another so-called electric box installed in a Lehigh Acres neighborhood, identical to the one with a camera inside. The Lee County Sheriff's Office refused to answer if the cameras were theirs. In an email, a spokesperson wrote, we are not at liberty to discuss any special investigative techniques or tactics that we employ. While the Sheriff's Office would not talk to us about the cameras, the people in this community had no problem sharing their opinions, and they were all across the board. Mixed emotions, really. Carol and Mike Frisbee live next door to the electric box and are split on how they feel about it. The shape and everything let me think it was a camera. Mike says he always thought it was a camera and is happy it's there, possibly to help protect his home. We do have some problems around here, so yeah, I, I think I feel safer. A little violated, but much safer. Carol says she wishes she had known about the camera when it was installed. I have no problem really with it being there now that I know it's there. One neighbor who didn't want to speak on camera says an electric crew she never heard of installed the box and told her it would boost cell reception. The same thing a Naples community was told about similar looking boxes that ended up being hidden cameras for Naples police. It really defeats the purpose to, to tell someone that there would be a surveillance system available. Slade Gurr owns Covert Law Enforcement, a company selling specialized technology to police like hidden cameras. He says most agencies are not using hidden cameras for general surveillance. If it's deployed in a covert nature, there, there is typically a specific reason or specific type of investigation that's being conducted. That is a bunch of baloney. This is not a law enforcement tactic. ACLU in Florida Executive Director Howard Simon is calling foul. He says law enforcement agencies should provide proof that surveillance cameras like this are making a difference. Let's do a study. Did they accomplish? No one in America started a revolution. No one. There was no resistance whatsoever. Uh, there was peaceful martial laws, I said. Military police were everywhere, and they knew everyone's whereabouts. Six Seattle cops can monitor your every move. They now own a piece of equipment that has tracking capabilities. And all it takes is a cell phone in your pocket. They can pick up any mobile device that's, that's near a node and, and track its movement. Uh, yes, a new wireless network set up all over the city can keep a log of the last 1,000 places you have visited. SPD says it's not being used right now, but new at 6, Cairo 7's David Hamm investigated to find signs the network is already active. You may not have noticed these white boxes mounted on poles across Seattle. You also may not know these boxes can track you through your cell phone. Back in February, Seattle police announced it bought what's called a mesh network with $2.6 million of Homeland Security money. 
The network has 160 wireless access points that dedicates a wireless network for emergency responses. When we have large public gathering situations like in Boston and something bad happens, the first thing we want to know is how are we using technology to capture that information. So here's how these wireless access points could be tracking you. If you go into your phone's Wi-Fi settings, you'll see these networks named after intersections, 3rd and Union, 4th and Pike, 4th and Union. These are all on the mesh network. Every time the network sees your phone, that data can be stored. Take this woman on the phone, for example. The network is capable of storing her IP address, the type of device she's using, the app she's using, her location, and match it up to the last thousand places she's been. They now own a piece of equipment that has tracking capabilities, so we think that they should be going to city council and presenting a protocol for the whole network that says they won't be using it for surveillance purposes. SPD said a policy is being reviewed by the city attorney's office and the network won't be used until the city council approves the plan. And we also asked SPD why we can see these network names if it's not being used. Well, they couldn't give us an explanation. Live in Seattle,